Well, friends, another fabulous recipe, chicken jambalaya a la Jean-Pierre. You're going to love this. You got to make this recipe. Don't forget to ring the bell if you like the recipe so you can get notification every Thursday at 10 o'clock. We put out a new video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We need subscribers. And, and don't forget to give us a thumb up, thumbs up if you like the recipe. Chicken jambalaya a la Jean-Pierre. Delicious. Okay, friends. Another one of my favorite chicken dishes. I love making it. Um, I call it a, a chicken jambalaya. Call it whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's kind of like a jambalaya, uh, and, uh, and I'm going to call it that. But I know the uh, recipe police on YouTube is going to say, that's not a typical jambalaya. Don't worry about it, whatever we call it. It's delicious, okay? I got it. Look, I wanted you to see. Before I start cooking, what is that called? Mise en place. Mise en place means put in place. I have everything ready, chopped and diced and ready to go in little bowls before you start cooking. Trust me, if there's one advice you got to follow, it's this one. Chop and dice everything in bowls before you start cooking. And one more thing you got to remember, by the way, I have some um, roasted garlic olive oil here roasted garlic olive oil. Use whatever you want. Use a good olive oil, yeah? The first thing we're going to do, friends, and then i talk in a minute about the rest of it, is saute the onion. When the onion are cooking and getting caramelized, then I can talk a little bit more about the rest of it. And the rest of it is going to be the chicken. The chicken. <laughs> it's chicken. And um, remember, the onion is always number one, eh? We want to caramelize the onion before we put anything else because if I were to put all my vegetables in it now, my tomatoes and all, do you think the onion is going to caramelize? No. Is the onion going to be any good if it doesn't caramelize? No, it won't. An onion is meant to be caramelized. It's sweeter, eh? Remember what I always tell? If you go to a restaurant and, uh, and, and the waiter says to you on your hamburger, sir, or madame, would you like caramelized onion or raw onion? Most of you can say, I'll take the caramelized onion. I know I will. <laughs> hey, so in my jambalaya or my chicken dish, whatever it is that I'm doing, it's better if I take the time to caramelize them. How do you do that? Easy. You put them on the floor, on the, on the stove, and you wait for them to be golden brown. A little bit. They're going to have more flavor. They're going to be sweeter. And I like things that are sweeter. Friends, chicken. What do we do with the chicken? Well, um, no skin. No skin. The only time I keep the skin of a chicken is if I uh, roast the chicken or if I grill the chicken. Otherwise, the skin is mostly fat. Do I want chicken fat in here? No, I do not. Years ago, you know, chicken fat was very tasty. I mean, I'm talking about like a hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah, I was not around. I'm old, but no, not that old. So, long time ago, chicken fat was delicious. Try chicken fat today. I don't think you're going to find it delicious, okay? Quite the contrary. You're going to find it like, Ugh. So, I don't put the skin. I remove the skin. I pen sear it. I create what is called the mala reaction. Get some caramelization of the protein on the chicken. It's M-A-I-L-L-A-R-D. Look it up. Google it up. <laughs> It'll tell you what it does on meat, on, hey, oh, yeah, on meat, on, on protein. You want to caramelize, caramelization of protein gives a flavor, okay? So I sauteed a little bit in a fry pan. I did it in advance to save some time because people think I talk too much. <laughs> what am I supposed to do when I'm waiting for the onion to get caramelized, right? They're going to talk too much. Well, you know what? You want some fast video, go to Tic Tac Talk or whatever, whatever it's called. Ding dong, tick tock, I don't know what it's called. But go in there, they got a recipe, man, like a 30 second. This is the recipe I do it with you. You get your mise en place, we do it together. Okay, that's the idea of this, of my, my videos. They're not like quick, bam, bam, bam. You want a quick, thank you, mom, you watch tick tock, tuk tock, whatever it's called. <laughs> okay, me, I do it with you. I like to do it with you. That's the whole idea. I'm cooking, okay? I'm not messing around here, okay? I'm not playing around, I'm cooking. All right, so look, guys, and remember, don't ever put the onion and the garlic in the same time. Eh? Whenever you see somebody do that, put the onion and the garlic at the same time in the pan, you go to the Playboy channel immediately. 
<laughs> Maybe you'll learn something. Shh, don't say that, I say that. All right, so look, guys. Um, uh, the onion, I, 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 they're not translucent anymore. They're starting to get light golden brown. Okay, and I'm, I'm happy with that. I don't want them to be like dark golden brown. Just light golden brown is all I'm really looking for, right? So now I can put my peppers. And, and, and I got red peppers, I got green pepper, I got orange pepper. Put whatever pepper you want to put on there, okay? It doesn't really matter. Try to cut them the same size. Remember, friends, size matter, okay? Very important. So <laughs> yeah, I can hear you already. Uh, um, no, no, really, it's important. Why is it important to cut the same size? Because it cooks at the same speed. All right, celery. Everything cut nice, see? Very nice, very nice. <laughs> and, uh, oh, uh, uh, andouille sausage, okay? Put a smoked sausage, put an andouille sausage, put calpasta, calbasa, whatever you want to put in here, okay? A smoked sausage is delicious, okay? Andouille sausage is beautiful. You buy that at the grocery store, okay? We're going to put um, a little bit of uh, a tomato puree. It looks like tomato paste, but it's tomato puree. It's going to give us a nice tomato flavor. Then I got some chopped tomatoes. I'm using... Um, I'm using um, an, an Italian plum tomatoes, and it's peeled already, eh? That's the one I use to make my marinara sauce. They're delicious. The brand of it is called La Valle. La Valle tomatoes. They're wonderful. Fresh thyme. We gotta use fresh herbs, eh? Fresh herbs. Fresh thyme and tarragon. Fresh tarragon. Tarragon. I don't know how you say it. Tarragon. Okay, and then we're gonna put a little bit of cayenne pepper. Be careful with the cayenne, okay? I say be careful, and then I, I don't have a spoon. You got to do very careful with a um, little more time, eh? There you go. Le be careful with the cayenne, friends. Be a little bit goes a long way, okay? That's it. We don't want to put too much. Now, it's up to you. You know, the way I look at it, friends, a seasoning should be in the background, never in the foreground. Meaning, you know it's in there, but it's in the background. It's never, never in the foreground. A little bit of garlic. This is the garlic puree we make. I think there is a video of me on YouTube that I made you like 10 years ago, how I make the puree, but just in case you don't see it, it's a, a pale garlic that I put in a full processor with olive oil. And I'm gonna put my stock. This is pre-measured seven cup of stock. Seven cup of stock. Then I'm going to put my rice. It's four cup of long grain rice. Let me make sure I don't forget nothing. All right. Now I'm going to put the chicken. Oh, yeah, baby. I'm going to put the chicken. Oh, the the pot is going to be full, 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 friends. Look at this. Wow. This is a seven-quart pot. You got to have a big pot. <laughs> have a big pot. Yeah, yeah. No, really, you do. Look. Look, seven quarts, and it's full. So you know what I could do with this? I could put this on it, and I can pop it in the oven. Take a long time in the oven, though. Or I can leave it like this, keep an eye on it, low heat, not too high heat, otherwise you're going to burn it, right? And a good low heat, and keep an eye on it, maybe 45 minutes, an hour, and this will be beautiful. The rice will cook to perfection. And, uh, and that's all day. Oh, oh, my goodness. I was going to forget the salt and pepper. I, I, you know, I do that a lot on YouTube. Because <laughs> I, I get to eat it after, and, um, and then I realize, oh, shoot, I forgot the salt and pepper. But a lot of you are, are reminding me, salt, salt, you forgot the salt. I know, I know, it's too late. What am I going to do? You know, it, it is what it is. Look at this. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay, so now we've got the cayenne. Just one more word to tell you about the spicing. Okay, it's very important, a background. Meaning, you shouldn't test it and go, oh, there's cayenne in there. Because <laughs> if you can test it right away, it's ha, too much, right? Any spice, uh, cinnamon, cloves, uh, not that you're going to put cinnamon and cloves in here, but I'm talking about nutmeg, uh, 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 cumin, especially cumin. Oh, mama mia. If you put too much cumin on something, I don't care if you're eating chicken or fish, it tastes like cumin. Okay, uh, background. 
You know, the idea is, is oh, oh, look, I forget the bell leaf. I'm talking, I'm talking. Uh, only two or three bell leaves, okay? Unless you're cooking for the French army, you don't use more than three bell leaves. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. All of a sudden, the bell leaves got me going. You know, three, four, four bell leaves right there. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, the idea about a, a seasoning, like a, like a cayenne or, or, or something, you don't want to recognize it right away the minute you eat it. Same thing with the garlic. I think garlic should be in the background, delicate delicate, you know, not, uh, not in your face, right? It, your guest should say, is this cayenne in there? You know, like kind of wondering, you can test a little bit in the background, it's like little heat, little flavor, because cayenne is very floral, it's very fragrant, but if you put too much, you're going to go, oh, yeah, you got cayenne in there, you know what I'm saying? Way too much. All right, we're going to let this cook, we'll come back, and then I'm going to test it. I'm going to check it out, I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's cooked, so we come back in about 45 minutes to an hour, okay? Okay, well, 45 minutes later, all I did is I put a little bit of parsley in here, chopped parsley. Remember, friends, if you see them, remove the bay leaves so nobody chokes on them, okay? If you don't see them, warn them. <laughs> don't choke on a bay leaf, right? And look at this. All we got to do for, oh, yeah, look at this. Look at this, friends. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this thing. You see? Oh, yeah. If you could be here to smell this thing. I guarantee you, you'll be eating with me. Oh, yeah, look, at, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Look at this, look at this, oh, yeah. You know, I am going to grab a knife, not that I really need it, because I bet you this comes out. See, look, it comes right off. You see? Now, let's check it out. The rice is the best part, the rice and the sausage. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. It's good. <laughs> mm. My mom always told me, don't talk with your mouth full. It is amazing. I'm telling you. Oh, you got to make this. You see how easy it was? You know, the only work was the mise en place. Prepare everything, chop and dice, everything ready to go. Mm. Mm. You're going to love this. It's amazing. Make extra because tomorrow is just as good. You may have to put a little bit of chicken stock the next day to reheat it. Mm. But it is delicious. Chicken jambalaya a la Jean-Pierre. Okay, enjoy it. Don't forget to ring the bell so you get notification every Thursday when I put out a new video. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And don't forget to subscribe. We need subscribers. All right, thank you so much.